Partial correlations can sometimes feel like a little bit magic. So let's work with that and see how that magic actually gets implemented in code. So I'm gonna start off with a uh, pretty straightforward example. So this is just the example that I gave in the video. Uh, this was the one about the correlations between socioeconomic status and uh, GMAT scores and um, hours spent studying. So that's what all of these letters correspond to. So RMG means the correlation between socioeconomic status and GMAT scores. So if you have no idea what I'm talking about, then uh, you should probably go back and watch the previous video. Okay, and then here I'm computing the partial correlations between socioeconomic status and GMAT scores and between the number of hours spent studying and GMAT scores. So you can see the partial correlation, like I showed in the previous video, is a pretty straightforward uh, computation to, to implement. So we take the raw correlation and we subtract off the correlations between each of these two variables and the third variable that we're not interested in, which in this case is S. So this is the uh, or the study hours, this is what we are controlling for, or partialing out. And then the denominator is basically uh, just a scaling factor that also involves the correlations that we are subtracting off here. Okay, so then you can see, so although I, I, made up the, I made up these numbers for the purpose of the video, but I didn't actually make up the partial correlations. So once we define these correlations, the partial, uh, the partial correlations that I reported in the video are actually the real partial correlations given these numbers. The only thing that I made up is the, the story around it. You know, the, I don't actually know what these correlations are in the real world. Okay, so then uh, what I'd like to do is simulate the, this or run this through a simulated data set. So I'm going to create a data set with three variables. So variable uh, x1, x2, and x3 you can see that x1 is just uh, increasing numbers from 1 through 10, uh, and then there's 76 for some reason, uh, and then we add random noise. And now I'm specifying that x2 and x3 are both equal to x1 plus some random noise. So this is one of the methods for generating correlated data sets that I've already uh, introduced you to. So this is going to give us a pretty strong correlation, but you can see that uh, uh, variables x2 and x3 are actually not defined relative to each other. So what we might expect to find is that these two are strongly correlated with each other, but that correlation is because they're each correlated with x1. Okay, so let's see. And then we compute the correlation matrix here. And actually, before looking at the partial correlation, I want to see what these raw correlations look like. So here we see, this is the correlation matrix. You can see that, uh, so this would be the correlation between x1 and x2, between x1 uh, and x3, and this is the correlation between x2 and x3. So really, really strongly correlated, almost at 0.9 correlated, uh, and they're not even defined relative to each other. Okay, and then this is the matrix of p-values, so it's all ludicrously significant. All right, so, uh, now, uh, you know, so this is the formula for the partial correlation, and you can also use the MATLAB function, which is called partial core. And the way that partial core works is you give three inputs. The first input is, uh, or the first two inputs are the variables that you want to correlate, and the third input is the variable that you want to partial out. That's the variable that you want to control for. So x2 and x3, what's the correlation between x2 and x3? partialing out or controlling for x1. Now we already know that the raw correlation is basically 0.9, and then it turns out that the partial correlation is 0 0.02. So it basically went from really close to one to really close to zero. That's a pretty remarkable thing about partial correlations. Okay, and then we, uh, so I'm now I'm gonna visualize this in a correlation matrix. I'll show you what this looks like first. So this is a visualization of the raw correlation matrix. That's nothing different than uh, this up here. I'm just putting it in a matrix and colorizing it. And of course, you already know that the matrix is symmetric. So this element equals this element because the correlation between 
variable one and variable two is the same thing as the correlation between variable two and variable one. Okay, and then over here, I have all of the partial correlations. So it's interesting to see that the partial correlations between x1 and, and x2 and between x1 and x3 decrease, they're still pretty strong, but they decreased a little bit when partialing out the other variable. And then, of course, this is what we saw uh, up here, wherever it was, uh, that the partial correlation between two and three when partialing out one drops to basically zero. So that's the point uh, here, that's the main message here. And then uh, the only thing in the text that are in the code that I want to highlight is the way that I got these numbers to appear in the matrix. So I use this MATLAB function text where I specify the X coordinate, the Y coordinate, the text, so the string that should appear there. And then just to make it look a little bit nicer, I'm setting the horizontal alignment to be center and the font size to be 15. This is a value that happens to look good on my screen. You might want to adjust that for your screen. Okay, and now in case you are like me and you don't like to have double for loops when they're unnecessary, you can implement exactly the same thing using these two lines of code. Now, because this is a course on statistics and not really a course on programming, I'm not gonna get into the theory of why this code works and how to interpret it. I will let you ponder and go through these lines of code. But this uh, also does the same thing over here that I did uh, up here in this double for loop. So the last thing I want to do here is change this simulation a little bit so that I want to enforce that variable three, x3, is already uncorrelated with variable x1. So I'm just gonna say zero times x1. So now it'll be interesting to see how that changes the raw correlation matrix and the partial correlation matrix. Now I'm going to run uh, this code. I'm gonna press F5 on the keyboard and run the entire script. But before that, I would like you to pause the video and think about what you expect these two matrices to look like when I rerun this code. Okay, did you pause and, and have a think about that? Here goes. So it's pretty interesting to see that the correlation between variables one and two, that would be these two elements in the matrix, that really didn't change at all with the partial correlation. It might have changed a tiny bit, you know, somewhere later down here in the smaller numbers, but certainly to the level of hundredths, it didn't change at all. And that shouldn't be surprising because now variable three is not defined based on variables one or variables two. So the partial correlation, when we partial this out, basically doesn't change. And then it's interesting to see that we actually got a bit of a negative correlation here between uh, variable three and variables one and two. So this is the correlation between basically noise and, uh, and these things. So that just happened to be this modest uh, negative correlation here. And that also got partialed out. So to the extent that there was any accidental, just sort of random shared variance here, that also got pulled right out. Okay, so there I ran it again, just out of curiosity. And here you see that again, the correlation between uh, variables one and two doesn't change when partialing out three. And now here, this just illustrates that the previous run where I got a modest negative correlation that was just chance. And, uh, and here the correlation, the baseline correlation was already quite low, 0.06, and then it got even lower, it got pushed down to 0.01. So at the time of this writing, or this filming, I guess I should say, um, Python, uh, NumPy, SciPy, and Pandas do not have partial correlation functions built in. So what I'm going to do is use this other package called, uh, I'm not really sure exactly how you pronounce this, Penguin or Pinguin, maybe it's pronounced Pigu or something. Depending on your version of Jupyter and your Anaconda package, this may or may not be already installed. So what I encourage you to do is run this cell. If you get an error message here, if it says, I have no idea what Penguin is, then that means you need to go install that package and then you can run this line. Now you only need to run this line once per install. So if you've already run this code once, then you've installed this penguin or whatever it's called uh, module, and then you don't need to run this code again. So where do you run this line of code? If you are on uh, a Linux machine or a Mac, then you would run this in the terminal. So not directly in Python, you run this in a terminal.
If you are running this on Windows, then you need to, to run this line of code using the Anaconda prompt. So you can go to the Start button, and let's see, this is gonna be an Anaconda, and then you want to do Anaconda prompt or Anaconda PowerShell, whatever. Uh, and then uh, you would type all of this stuff in here. So conda install is the conda forge penguin. Type that in here, press enter, and then it will install this package. And then you should be able to run this line here back in Jupyter Notebook, and it should run with no problem. All right, now I want to start by uh, computing the partial correlations of the variables that I showed in the slide. So the example that I showed in the slide, that was the one about um, computing the correlations between socioeconomic status, exam scores on the GMAT test, and uh, hours spent studying. So RMG stands for the correlation coefficient, so the raw correlation between socioeconomic status and GMAT scores. So these are the numbers that I uh, presented in the slides. Now, I made up the whole story about what these data reflect, but I didn't actually make up the numbers. The partial correlations were real based on these raw correlations. So I'm going to show you that now by implementing the partial correlations exactly using the formula that I showed you in the slides. So the correlation that we are interested in minus the product of the correlations between each of these variables and the, um, the variable that we're controlling for or partialing out. That's the numerator. And then the denominator is just this normalization factor that involves uh, the correlations that we want to partial out. Okay, and then I'm going to print these. So now you see that we do indeed get a correlation of zero, a partial correlation of zero, and a partial correlation of 0.5 for these two variables. Okay, now what I want to do here is uh, show you some partial correlation matrices in larger data sets. So I'm going to uh, create a data set with n equals 76, no particular reason to use 76, except that I was born in Philadelphia, and you can look up the name of the basketball team in Philadelphia. Anyway, so this data set will have three variables, x1, x2, and x3. And x1 is defined as numbers that go from uh, 1 to 10, plus random noise. x2 is x1 plus some more random noise, and x3 is also x1 plus random noise. So this is interesting because you can see that we are going to be imposing a very strong correlation between x1 and x2 and between x1 and x3. In fact, this is one of the methods that I showed you for producing correlated random numbers. Okay, but also notice that x2 and x3 are not defined relative to each other. So the fact that x2 and x3 are correlated with each other has to do with the fact that both of these variables are based on the same initial variable, x1. So that's kind of like how you know the, the weather uh, predicts um, ice cream consumption and it predicts uh, shark attacks. Okay, and then I'm putting these into a pandas data frame here. And then I'm gonna compute the raw correlation coefficients. Let's see, so here you see the uh, raw correlation coefficients and you see x1 and x2 are strongly correlated, x1 and x3 are really strongly correlated, and x2 and x3 are also pretty strongly correlated, you know, around 0 0.86, 0 0.87. So that's a pretty remarkably strong correlation considering that the variables actually have nothing whatsoever to do with each other. It's just that they both inherited the same dynamics from variable x1. Okay, and then I'm using this uh, penguin p <laughs> uh, module to compute the partial correlation. So I input the data frame and then I specify which are the two variables that I want to correlate, so x1 and x2. And then the other term, covar, this is what we want to covary, this is what we want to partial out or control for. So I'm computing the correlation, the partial correlation between x1 and x2 removing any shared variance with x3. That's basically how you read all of these inputs here into the partial core function. And that gives me this uh, here. So we see that the correlation between variable x1 and x2, it, when partialing out uh, x3, is still pretty strong. And so it dropped from 0.96 down to 0.68. Uh, 
And you can see it's very strongly statistically significant, but that's not what we care about so much here. So now I wanna change this. I wanna compute the uh, partial correlation between X3 and X2 when partialing out X1. So remember, this is the interesting case because here these variables are strongly correlated, but they are correlated with each other because they are directly correlated with X1. Okay, so let's run all this code again. Now these numbers are gonna be a bit different because I generated new random numbers. And now it's interesting to see that this correlation has dropped precipitously. It is now uh, negative, but it's still uh, close to zero. In fact, it's not statistically significantly different from zero. The p-value is 0.28. So this is statistically indistinguishable from a correlation of zero. The magnitude happens to be at negative and at around 0.1. Okay, so that was pretty interesting. Now what I'm going to do is visualize, like that, correctly spelled, uh, all these matrices. Uh, I'm gonna actually just run this code and show it to you and then I'll go back and explain it. So this is the raw correlation matrix. So uh, the correlation between X1 and X2 is 0.94. The correlation between X1 and X3 is 0.92. And the correlation between X2 and X3 is 0.85. So this is the matrix of partial correlation. So now this is the correlation between each pair of variables partialing out the variance attributable to the third variable. So then this is pretty interesting because we see that the correlation between X1 and X2 is still strong. The correlation between X1 and X3 is still strong. And the correlation between X2 and X3, that's this uh, number here, it actually dropped to basically zero plus some rounding error. I'm gonna, out of curiosity, run this again, see if we get uh, numbers that are closer to zero for that partial correlation. Let's see, uh, no, it ended up being about the same. Probably non-significant, let's see. Yeah, the p-value is uh, basically the same. Okay, so this is how I create the matrix, and here is how I put the text on top. So I basically just loop over all the rows and all the columns and add text to the uh, I J coordinate I coordinate J and then the actual um, correlation values and then the partial correlation values. Okay, so then there's one more thing I want to do in this video, which is I'm gonna change the simulation and then I'm gonna rerun all this code. And before I rerun all the code, I would like you to think about what you expect is going to happen. So let me first tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to decouple X3 from this correlated system. So I'm going to redefine X3 so that it is no longer based on X1, and I'm not gonna to touch X1 or X2. So I would like you to pause the video and think about what you would expect to happen to this matrix, the raw correlations matrix, and what you expect to happen to the partial correlations matrix. Okay, so let's see, I'm going to, uh, here's how I'm gonna implement that. I'll just say zero times X1, so that's basically just a way of getting rid of this thing. So now X1 and X2 are the same, they're defined in the same way, and X3 is pure noise, so it should be really uncorrelated with X1 and X2. Okay, so now let's rerun that to regenerate the data, and then generate these new matrices here. Okay, so this is now pretty interesting, and what happened here is that once I decoupled X3 from the system, now the raw correlations matrix and the partial correlations matrix look really, really similar to each other. Nearly, you know, not, not numerically identical, but certainly much, much, much closer to each other compared to the previous run. So the raw correlation between X1 and X2 is 0.93, and the partial correlation is still 0.93. So, you know, they might differ a little bit further down, but they certainly don't differ to two orders of precision after the decimal point. And then, not surprising, uh, variable x3 is not correlated with x1 and it's not correlated with x2. And uh, in fact, those correlations get even weaker with the partial correlations. And they get even smaller because there is, you know, even though we're generating this with noise, because of sampling variability, the correlation is not exactly, exactly zero. It's just very small. So there is some chance residual correlation between uh, X3 and the other two variables. And so still the partial correlation analysis identifies those tiny, tiny correlations. 
and removes them from the data. So that's why the numbers here get even smaller than they get over here.